are the saints we are the saints. in paradise. paradise. Sitting on a cloud to be precise. To be precise. Playing our funky music. The angels are the saints in paradise. Cloud six. Unaware that the lawyer was scribbling in his notepad as he watched them, the musicians collected hundreds of petals in their long white gowns. They then proceeded to collect some stems from which they would obtain the sap. This would form the base for the dyes. They then collected some stones. These would be used to crush the petals in order to extract the dye. They also found some shells, which could act as containers. The trouble is, George pointed out, we can only dye the gowns that we already have. Uh, we may be able to dye them different colours, but they'll be the same style. There's not really enough material in each of them to enable us to alter them at all, really. That's true, Spike agreed. Besides, it would mean us working naked while we're dyeing them. I'm naked all the time, Chico pointed out. Yes, we noticed, Chico replied, Sai. But you've got a baby's body, it doesn't matter with babies. It's true, Spike confirmed. Can't, can't you think of something, Chico? Chico thought for a while, then he suddenly flew up into the sky with joy. Joy flew off and Chico came back down again. I've just remembered, he told them. There are some spare gowns of all shapes and sizes. They were left over from those spirits that have gone to a higher level or have returned to earth to try their luck again in another life. Ah, Duke nodded. An action replay, eh? Where do we find these gowns, asked Del. In the Shroud Cloud, of course, Chico told them. Of course, they all said at once, nodding to each other. Where else? I'll take you there, Chico offered, and off they went to the Shroud Cloud. Fortunately, the flowers and stones were all of the spirit kind, and so, like the saints themselves, didn't weigh anything at all. This was quite a weight off their minds. Before very long, and before their very eyes, was the Shroud Cloud. It was shrouded in mystery, and mysteriously shrouded. How do we get in? asked Duke. Use your head, Spike told him. It's just a cloud, right? Right, repeated Duke. Clouds are made of water, right? Right. So it needs a tap on the door, right? Oh, what a drip, Duke mocked him. What do you expect, Spike countered as he gestured towards the others. I'm a part of this shower. Don't talk wet, George joined in. Why don't we pool all our knowledge? I'm sure we'll turn out of all as right as rain. Chico didn't understand the banter. Actually, he told them, you just walked walk right through it. They all walked through it, walked right through it and came out the other side. No, no, Chico told them in frustration. You walked too far. You're supposed to stop in the middle. Now he tells us, Spike laughed. They walked through again and stopped in the middle. The centre of the cloud was made up of many different bands of colours. It reminded them of a Scottish tartan. It reminds me of a Scottish tartan, said Dell, as though he'd just read the last line. It must be Scotch mist, Duke commented. Here are the shrouds, Chico told them as he sorted them out. Take your pick. I don't think we need a pick, said Spike. They're not that hard. Chico looked puzzled. He hadn't quite got used to their sense of humour yet. They found shrouds of all shapes and sizes, just as Chico had said. They took a few of these shrouds and made their way back to their own quarters. You know something? Duke asked. With the dyes, with the material, but we haven't got anything to put them together with. He's right, you know, Spike agreed. Any suggestions, guys? They all sat, sat down and racked their brains. 
I've got it, said George at last. Hope he's not catching, Spike told him in mock horror. No, George told him. I mean, I've got an idea. Well, don't keep it to yourself, Duke urged him. Spill the beans, man. There's probably pine trees in the garden, right? George elucidated. Right, agreed Duke. Pine trees have pine needles, right? Right. So we can use the pine needles as needles, George explained. Excuse me for p pricking your balloon, George, Dell interrupted, but pine needles don't have eyes in them. That's true, Spike agreed, and if they haven't got eyes, they won't be able to see to our needs. Yeah, Duke interrupted, anyone can see that. We can soon make eyes, George insisted. If there was some decent women up here, we could, he said, Duke said. Don't worry about them, George. We've just got the needles because they didn't think of it first, said Spike. But tell me this, O oh wise one. How are we going to make eyes in the needles? Come on, give us the benefit of your wisdom, great guru. I'm sure we're all willing pupils. Right, Duke agreed. Any pupils that are not, who are not willing... We'll get twenty lashes. It's easy, George persisted. We merely make eyes in one needle with the point of another needle. He's got a point there, Spike agreed. Great idea, George, Duke praised him. Hands up, all those in favour. They all put up their hands. The eyes have it, Duke announced. I agree that George has a good point, Spike said thoughtfully. But, darn it. We haven't got any cotton. Excuse me, Dell joined in, but I'm still trying to pick up the threads of this. They all sat down and thought once again. Er, uh, excuse me, said Chico, but I thought the shrouds were made of material. Cotton? Maybe they are, Spike agreed, but they're made of material, not thread. But isn't material made of spun Thread? asked Chico innocently. If so, couldn't you unpick the cotton threads for some of the shrouds? Chico, you're wonderful, Spike praised the little cherub. We didn't think of that. Because the problem had clouded our judgment, I suppose, said Duke. Now, thanks to Chico, we've got it covered. They all started picking at the threads, spinning yarns as they did so. Then another problem arose. Don't know, always. They didn't have any scissors. They were quite cut up about that. Stone, said, called out uh, Dell suddenly. Paper, Spike counted. Scissors, said Duke. My scissors cut your paper. Listen, Dell tried to regain some kind of order. We get two stones and sharpen one against the other to make a knife, just like the cavemen used to. Del Spike praised his colleague, I'm proud of you. That was very sharp of you indeed. Yep, yeah, Duke agreed, I'll never call you a Neanderthal again. The little band of bandsmen collected their pine needles, sharpened their stones, pulled their threads, mixed their dyes and set about making themselves some fashionable new clothes. All this activity was still under the watchful eye of you-know-who, the lawyer. Duke made himself a pair of red flared strides, or trousers for the less hip, and white flashes in the sides and a white poncho. These were carefully decorated by Dell, the artistic one, with psychedelic signs and symbols. Spike made a flowered shirt with wide sleeves and blue jeans. George ran up a red shirt with a cape at the back and yellow flared trousers. He had to run down them again though, it stretched the material. So I was content with a yellow shirt and white trousers. Dell made a tie-dye shirt with purple trousers which had red stars all over them and Des made do with a white shirt and green trousers. As you may have guessed from their choice of styles, they were a bunch of old hippies. Now you know the old expression, old hippies never die, simply isn't true. 
They didn't bother with shoes, they thought that task would be too much of a feat. Duke suddenly started tapping the undersides of his bare feet in rhythm. What are you doing, asked Spike. I'm playing a little song music, he replied. They all picked up their instruments and joined in. Chico picked up the flute and they all went into a swinging session in their swinging new jeans. Spreading happiness and peace and love. Willie the Wasp thought that he heard thunder in the distance as he sped over the city of Tucked in Wells. He was worried in case he wouldn't be, be able to make it to headquarters before the rain started. Actually, he needn't have worried. What he didn't know was it was Spike playing on his bass drum up in heaven. Willie zoomed through Solo Square and into a crack in the wall of the Strike Dragon Club. Eventually, he landed at the entrance of a mouse hole in the skirting board of one of the offices. Crawling through the hole, he made his way through a series of tunnels until he came to the compartment that had been designated as the headquarters of the operation. Hello, Willie, Madge Mouse greeted him. Have you got some news? Yes, I have, he told her, and quickly related the gangster's plans about the raid that was being planned for Bedside Manor. This is exactly the information we want to put our plan into action, said Carly the Cockroach. Now then, can you alert W Squadron in Bedside Forest, Willie? The Wasp nodded. Madge then turned her attention to Murgatroyd Moth. Now this is where you come in, Murgatroyd. The Moth listened intently as the Cockroach told him the rest of the plan. was in uproar as the bomb flew through the air and the mice and cockroach scurried on their way a big explosion followed and when the smoke had cleared the band was snuffed and found they couldn't play we are the saints we are the